welcome back. All right, this is another episode of Tech Talk with Suits, and I am your lovely host, Suits. So, as I've said before, I love technology. I love learning about it, I love teaching about it, I love seeing and using it, it's wonderful. Uh, however, I remember when I was young, I would watch TV and I would watch movies and I would hear about hackers, and I always thought it was so cool. Uh, in fact, I remember when I was first growing up, my parents had the movie Sneakers with Robert Redford. Great movie, great movie. Uh, but I remember watching as they're like typing to their terminal, I'm like, oh, this is cool. They're getting money from banks or from other people and they're transferring it and they're able to do all these amazing things. And I was like, oh, I wonder how true this is. That movie is actually somewhat more true. Um, or real, realistic, I should say, not true. But it made me start wondering because I started hearing hackers and I thought, oh, I want to be a hacker when I grow up. And then after a while, I'm like, oh, hacking is illegal. And then I grew up and now I am studying to be an ethical hacker, as well as work in cybersecurity. So hacking, I wanted to talk about this because I mentioned this in a past video between hackers and attackers, and really what the difference is. So to preface this, hacking is not necessarily illegal. Hackers are not necessarily bad people. Are there bad hackers? Yes, there can be. The bad hackers are usually called attackers. But hacking has been around since the 1900s, uh, ever since anything electronic, people have always tried to find a way to manipulate, get into, change, modify, whatever. Uh, in fact, in the 1900s, there was supposed to be a, and forgive me for this, the foggy memory, there was supposed to be some secure line of communication that somebody was giving a demonstration on. And it was a hacker and magician who tapped into it and started sending Morse code and sending mean insults to the person who was doing it. So they proved that no, their line isn't as secure as they thought. So hacking has been around for a long time. However, hacking became very interesting in the 1960s, around the time when computers really started. Now, hacking, I thought, okay, it's just with computers. It couldn't have started before we had computers. Well, it had. Uh, in fact, in the 1960s, hacking didn't start with computers, really. It started because of model trains. There were model train clubs and these people in them wanted to see if they could modify their model trains and get them to do cool stuff. So they would open them up, tinker with stuff, they would change whatever the programming and see if they could give them different cool features. Now, obviously this is not malicious. It's not like anybody's trying to hack a toy train or a model train to get it to do something illegal. They simply wanted to see if they could modify it. A lot of people modify things. Computers, phones, Nerf guns happen a lot. Shouldn't modify fireworks, but it does happen. A lot of things get modified. Vehicles get modified all the time. So modification is basically what hacking is. It's they're trying to find out exactly how things work and see if they can change it. Now there is malicious hacking, which is attacking. We'll talk about that in a minute. But these, these people were just modifying their model trains. And then of course, the next big thing happened in the 1980s, which was Computers were no longer just these giant bulky things. They were kept in facilities and schools and things like that. The personal PC now had come out and you could have a computer in your home. And just what every tech person dreams of, being able to sit their computer in their underwear, eating Cheetos or a bowl of cereal. Or is that just me? No? Okay. Yeah, hackers. They got the computers and they're like, yes, I want to see what these computers can do. They wanted to test the limits, test the boundaries, try making it better, try making it different because just because this company had made the computer and the software, maybe this person could make it work better. So all they needed was to be able to take a look at this person's computer and software and change it up. Or maybe they had different ideas or they just wanted to mess around with it. And that's exactly what happened. So. They started getting these, which is why I'm saying hacker is not a bad term. It has a bad name now because of some things that happened later on that we'll talk about. One of my favorite stories about the earlier days though, it's not even computer, it's phones. When phones became electronic and went over the electronic lines, uh, there was a guy named, if I remember correctly, John, John Draper, if I'm correct. And before you go, oh, it's a history lesson with names. This is funny. I didn't care so much about his name. I loved his alias, Captain Zap. That is funny. 
Way better than Taser Face. So Taser Face. <laughs> so Captain Zap found that when you open up a phone line, it goes by hertz. If you have a certain hertz, it could open up a long distance line. Why is this at all important? You'll never guess where he found the tool to open up a new long distance line and get free long distance calling. The whistle in a Captain Crunch box. So a toy out of a cereal box. He found out that it went on the same hertz as the phone company did for a long distance call line. So he just simply would blow the whistle boop, into the phone and it gave him free long distance calling because of a toy from a Captain Crunch box. That's awesome. It really makes me wish that there were more toys like Burger King and uh, McDonald's and the, the cereal boxes that would give you better toys and that way you could modify things with, that'd be cool. But, so he tried that and he found out and a lot of people started doing as well. So that scene from the core when Rat folds up the gum wrapper and boop, into the phone, not so far off base. You've got free long distance on that phone forever. Not so far off base. I was like, no, that's not true. And then I saw this and went, holy crap, that's actually possible. Oh, so that was one of the, the funny ones that I loved. So around 1980 is when hacking really took off. Now, I, I'm going to have anybody who's computer savvy getting mad at me if I don't mention this one. 1979. It's not the most interesting hack, but it is one of the larger ones, and it deals with somebody who is very well known in the techie world. Uh, Kevin Mitnick. He is kind of like the Michael Phelps of hacking. 1981, I believe, is when there was another guy, uh, Ian McMurphy, I think. He was the first person, now when I say this, there were a lot of people who had done hacking and gotten in trouble for it and arrested and tried. However, Ian was the first one who got tried and convicted as a felon for his computer crime. And what did he do? Kind of funny, actually. Uh, he hacked into AT&T. Why would you care about that? Well, back in the day, AT&T, when long distance charges were a thing, long distance was more expensive in the middle of the day because those were peak times, just like electricity and everything else, peak times. But if you waited late at night, it wasn't as expensive. He went in and flipped the clocks. What this did was it made anybody who was calling midday got it for nearly free and anybody who was calling late at night got charged a ton. Now, obviously, that's going to cause a lot of problems with billing and with people's money. He wasn't stealing the money. He would just flip the clocks. So even something as simple as flipping time can do it. But yeah, he got convicted in a felony and that was one of the first major ones. Now, I am going to I do laugh because the other day I was looking up and seeing just for kicks and giggles, maybe there's a smartphone out there that's the chosen one. And somebody put in a form, guys, if you think any hackers care at all about smartphones, you're wrong. Smartphones, ever since computers came out, phones were kind of, I mean, you could do things with phones like the flip phones and the bar phones, but that was pretty much texting and calling and there wasn't too much else. With the invention of smartphones, now you have your life in the palm of your hand. Have you bought anything off Amazon or eBay or made any orders through your phone lately? Or do you have a whole bunch of pictures you'd rather not get out? Or text messages that are kind of not appropriate and you'd rather they not leak out into the internet? Or you have a lot of other sensitive information like social security numbers or anything about driver's license. Your life tends to be on a smartphone. Smartphones are based on a mobile OS. What does that mean? Same thing as Windows operating system, Linux operating system, whatever you're running on your systems. Smartphones have the same thing. They have a mobile operating system. Androids have a version of Linux, which also, cool fun fact, U uh, Unix, UNIX, was a very early operating system that came from hackers because they looked into a software operating system and thought, hey, we can do this. And they made a cool free operating system. So yes, your smartphones are very open to hacking if you don't close things off. And yeah, if somebody can get into your phone, that's a whole lot of information. So the computers opened up hacking to a whole new world and then smartphones opened it up even wider. Whole new worlds to hacking and what we can do. Now, the other fun thing. So 
Hacking, like I said, is not always malicious. We did go over how there's black hat hackers, which are malicious, those are attackers. Gray hat, which are kind of good and bad, and then white hat that are the good guys. If you've ever heard of jailbreaking your phone or rooting it, if you're an Android, all that means is that you are taking off the administrative uh, restraints. So if you root or jailbreak your phone, you're taking off the administrative restraints that keep you from deleting some of those programs. Maybe it's going to allow you to download some different apps that give you more access to things. You have full access. That's what that means. There are pros and cons to both sides. So be very careful if you decide to do that. But even that is a version of hacking. Somebody figured out, hey, I can break the, the administrative limits on my phone and I can be the full administrator. I can do whatever I want with this phone. You could technically load your own operating system onto a phone, though it might mess up the phone and that's a very expensive mistake. But that is the history of hacking in a nutshell. If you have any questions or comments or maybe there's a hack that you want me to shout out about or you think that part of my history was incorrect, I am terrible with history and names and dates, so let me know. If there's something you wanna add or you have your own story or there's something you want me to talk about or teach about, you're confused about anything, let me know. This is the channel for it. And this is Suits signing off. Have a good one.